All right, you guys. So this is our fourth, our fourth call for this Stuck to Unstuck series. And I don't know about you guys, but I feel so excited about all of the information that has been shared from other leaders. And the cool thing, you guys, about each leader that you're hearing from is everyone has a little bit of a different personality, a little different um, style, comes from a different background, but they're all succeeding in this business because they finally decided to get out of their own way and just go for it. And I'm super excited about our speaker tonight, Melissa Brewer. I've kind of watched her from afar, and she probably doesn't even know that, but I've watched her success over the last year, and it's been really inspiring to see because she has three little ones at home. Six. She is a wife, and she has been a coach for five years, you guys. So, you know, a lot of us think like, okay, you hit the ground running from day one, and if you don't hit the ground running from day one and hit Superstar Diamond within the first year or two, then you're gonna be a horrible coach. That's not the case, you guys. That is not the case. So she's been a coach for five years. And this this is one of the parts that I loved hearing is that she started 2018 as a five-star diamond team. Okay, so they were five-star. And finished 2018 as a 10-star qualifying team. If you guys haven't looked up the, you know, what it takes to be a 10-star diamond and to hold it and all that stuff, you guys, that's a huge accomplishment right there. Okay, they're also, you know, last week they were 11 star, and this week they're currently, so I guess as of this Thursday, they'll be 12 star qualifying as a team. That's amazing, you guys. So finishing 2018 as a 10 star, and they've already, you know, have two new diamonds who have popped since the beginning of January. How amazing. They are three-time elite. And she's also a Success Club All-Star Legend. So what that means is she's helped five people every single month get started on their health and fitness journey and or business uh, for the last two years. And that's, I think, if we can all strive for that, just think about that, you guys, how many people are going to be started with our products and, and helping change their lives. But Melissa, I'm going to hand it over to you because I don't want to talk too much, but I'm going to have my notes going and I know everyone else is as well. Let me see if I can find your find your face so I can make you the spotlight. I'm great. So I'm I feel like we look like twinners tonight. <laughs> we we do we look great. great. Yeah. We okay. planned that, you guys. We totally planned it. <laughs> well, thanks so much, Meg. It's so funny that you say that because I feel like I've watched you for a long time. You have been in our upline and just someone that really was inspiring to me and someone that I looked up to as a young coach and even still today. So that was really, I guess, really special to me to hear that you even know who I was. Cause I kind of feel like I'm someone, I don't really like attention. I like to kind of fly under the radar um, and just do my thing. But I was really excited when Meg was talking um, and asking for coaches who felt like they had some kind of moment where they went from feeling stuck in their business to then getting unstuck. And for me, I feel like I've been stuck a couple times in my business life. Um, I started coaching in December of 2013. And like Meg said, I have three kids now, but at the time I had two kids and they were both under two. My baby was four months old and I was teaching full time. And my vision for the business was this is going to make you laugh. Probably. I thought it would be really easy. I thought I would sign up as a coach, make all this money and be able to quit my full-time job really quickly. Um, and unfortunately that wasn't the case for me. I wasn't someone that hit super high success club numbers. In fact, I didn't even hit success club, um, 12 months, 12 months consecutively in my first year as a coach, but I did see a lot of roller coaster success and that kind of kept me pushing along. At about a year into my business, I had hit diamond. I think it was like my fifth or sixth month as a coach. But at about a year, I remember telling my husband that I was probably going to quit. And I just felt like I wasn't very good at it. I had like I don't even know if I I maybe had one builder under me. Um and I just didn't feel like I was reaching people. It didn't come as easily to me. 
as it did for a lot of the other girls on our team. And that, it, I kind of just was stuck comparing myself to everyone else. Um, and I remember I went to the Success Club trip because somehow I earned it. <laughs> and we went on this trip and I just, it was almost like my eyes were opened to the possibilities. The, I, I got to talk with a lot of coaches, even though I was probably the worst coach at the time. I didn't go to any of the meetings. We literally went and used that success club trip as a vacation, but I did go to the workouts and I did um, spend time with my upline coach and a few of her coaches who were on that trip as well. That was a game changer for me. I'd never been to a Super Saturday. I had never been to Summit, um, and I had earned my free Summit ticket, but I didn't go because I was the head volleyball coach and couldn't take the time off. Um, but I wasn't, what I recognized was, or I guess what I recognize now is I wasn't fully committed. I kind of had like one toe in and most of my body out, <laughs> you know? I was very skeptical and I was very unsure if I would be someone who could be successful in the business. And although I had seen little snippets of success, I didn't feel successful. Um, for about two years, I was stuck at Diamond. And like I said, I didn't really have any builders and I didn't have that confidence um, in my recruiting. And I wasn't sharing really authentically. I was copying posts from other coaches. That's kind of embarrassing to say out loud, but it's true. And I wasn't being my authentic self. And I remember thinking, I really want to leave my full-time job. Like that was my goal when I became a coach. And that was where I wanted to be at that point. I, um, had, I actually had left teaching to work for an education technology company because it paid a little more and gave also a little bit more time freedom. I could work from home one day a week. So I didn't have to take my babies to daycare every single day. Um, and it was, I, I kind of had an awakening when in that year of 2015, at the very end of the year, um, when I was doing, you know, talking about goals with my upline coach and thinking about the future. And she kind of just said to me, where do you want this to go? What do you want out of this? Because I want to help you, but you're not like, basically she said, you're not doing the work. And I needed that tough love at the time because I had really been um, writing her coattails. I'd been putting all my challengers into her groups. I had been using her sneak peeks. I hadn't ever really taken control of my business. The next year in 2016, um, our team became a five-star team and we were able to go to leadership. And that was another game changer. Events are huge, you guys. If you haven't been going to events, no matter how big or small they are, they are so important for your business and for your growth. When you hear Kim Carver throwing out statistics about Summit and about Super Saturday and coaches making more money when they're um, being, you know, participating in Team Cup, that is legit. That's real. And I think sometimes we take those numbers for granted. But I promise you, when you are fully invested, you will see your business also um, full. I don't know how to say that, but when you're fully invested, you'll also see your business grow as if you're fully invested. And so when we became a five-star team, I remember telling my success partner at the time, by the time I hit five years in this business, I'm going to be in the million club. You guys, I'm not in the million club. I'm, I've been a coach for five years, but that was the first time I really set my vision, that was the first time where I said, I really want to grow my team and I really want to help a lot of people see success in this business. Um, I left my full-time job that year and that was probably one of the biggest game changers for me in <laughs> taking that ownership of, I am the CEO of this business and it's up to me to make this business work. 
So at that point, like I said, we were a five-star team, but I was still developing leaders. I was still developing my coaches and still helping them to see their potential. And I noticed a lot of them taking the same route I took. And I think that happens to a lot of us is we kind of (laughs) attract, you know, the same type of people as us. And so that's, that was a, um, eye opening for me. It helped me to see, okay, I have created a culture where slow success is okay. And I wanted so much more for them. And I know that they came into the business wanting more than what they were getting out of me as their mentor and their leader. And, um, in November, 2017, um, so we were, we were a five-star team once again for two years in a row. And we kind of got stuck. And that was really disappointing to me because I thought I had made this change. Um, But in fact, I really hadn't adopted and put into practice what I had learned through that experience. Um, In 2017, we had our third baby. And I was then working on losing my postpartum baby weight. And (laughs) you guys, I thought... I was like, oh, this is going to be so easy. I'm a coach. I'm going to lose all this weight really fast. And six months had gone by and I still had 35 pounds to lose. I, or yeah, I had 35 pounds to lose still. Um, and I had gained probably 50. <laughs> I know that's probably maybe not a shocker to some of you, but for me, I was like, how did I gain more weight with this baby than when I wasn't a coach with my second baby? But that's what happened. And like I said, at six months postpartum, I still had all this weight to lose. And I was invited to um, be in the To Be Mindset test group. This opportunity I knew um, was going to change my life. I remember, I'm going to try and not get emotional. Um, (laughs) I remember sitting at leadership and seeing that, you know, I was holding my baby and my husband was there with me, um, and he's always been so supportive. And I remember watching this, what do they call it, sizzle video. <laughs> I remember watching the sizzle and thinking, oh, my word, I cannot wait for this program because this is everything that I've ever struggled with. Um, I've always, always been so self-conscious of my weight. Sorry. I'd always struggled with weight loss. I remember being a young girl and my mom telling me, you don't fit into these clothes. You know, we have to go to the adult store. You can't go to the the place where all your friends shop. And that really um, was hard for me. I wanted to be in control of my weight and I wanted to feel empowered. And I wasn't, even at a very young age, I remember sitting on the on the circle in second grade and, and thinking like, I need to suck in because I'm bigger than all of my friends. And I just had such a horrible relationship with food. Um, and when I got the invite to be in the test group, it was truly an answer to my prayers because I was starting to really, um, question if I was ever going to lose this baby weight, you know, and I was really trying to stay positive and trying to share my journey of, I, I think I was almost faking it, like, oh my gosh, I'm losing weight, but really I wasn't. I wasn't feeling confident in my clothes. I couldn't fit into anything. And I started with To Be Mindset, and I told my husband, I'm going all in. This is either a sink or swim, you know, like you either go all in and you give it your all, or I, I just can't accept it. And so he decided to commit with me, And that was a huge game changer because he does a lot of the cooking. (laughs) If I'm being honest, I'm a horrible cook. And so his support helped me to lose 12 pounds within the first month and then continue to lose the, the rest of the 15 probably that I had left to lose over the next couple of months. What was the game changer is my commitment. Okay. I had not been committed to my own journey. And this is something that I was teaching all of my new coaches 
you know, the first step is committing to your journey, committing to your weight loss. And I had so many people trusting me that, you know, I was doing the same things as them. And really here I was eating a tub of halo top and not really being fully committed. But once I had that opportunity, I went for it. And I want to just say, don't wait for an invite to a test group to let our programs change your life. I'm really disappointed in myself that I didn't take, you know, one of our other programs and really stick to it and commit to my journey and stick to our nutrition and get results before that point. But I'm so glad I never gave up either. Um, so if you're feeling stuck, if you're feeling like, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I don't know why my business isn't growing. There are a couple of things that I want to share and some tips, I guess, or some of the things that I did in my business once I became, or once I started the to be mindset that really helped me to shift not only my own personal journey, but also my journey as a coach and my business and help to really transform my mindset and my confidence and my belief in myself. Okay. So the first thing I um, really did, and I kind of have already said this is take a look at your commitment in lots of different areas. So number one, look at your commitment to your program and your nutrition. If something's not working for you, change it. I always struggled with the container system, always. And I'm so grateful that Beachbody saw people having success and they also saw people not having success because I was one of those other people who just struggled to stick to a really portioned out meal. Um, and having that freedom was something that worked for me. If to be mindset doesn't work for you, go to the containers because both are amazing and both work when you, when you stick to them, when you do them. Um, so number one, take a look at your commitment at, with your physical fitness, your health and fitness journey. Number two is take a look at your commitment to your team. Um, I had been really slacking and I, I don't want to necessarily blame our baby or anything, but I had really been slacking and had lost my commitment with my team in terms of holding team calls, um, sharing and training and mentoring them and providing resources for them. And so, you know, with To Me Mindset, not only did I gain confidence in my journey physically, but I also gained confidence in what I had to share with my team. I saw my business and my results changing. I saw myself gaining more confidence in the things I was sharing on social media. And instead of just only keeping that to myself, I took it to my team and shared that with them. So look at your commitment to your team and your business. Are you sharing authentically the things that you're learning about yourself, about your body, about your journey, about all of these gifts that you have? Because honestly, that's what we do as coaches. We're sharing the things that work for us in our entire life, in our health and our fitness, in our courage and our mindset, in our confidence, um, whatever your, you know, thing is, share more of that. Gain confidence in what you have to offer. Instead of, you know, my, my wording changed a lot. Instead of feeling like this, you know, this is something that, you might want to try that that used to be my language now i had that belief in saying this is what you need this is what changed my life and i know it will change yours and i know i can help you um when you have that confidence in what you know when you're speaking to a prospect or to a coach or a potential coach there's nothing that can stand in your way and people will feel that energy coming from you. You probably have heard a lot of talk about energy and all that. It's real. And when you have full belief and when you're really truly living that life, then the things that you're talking about to your potential customers or clients or coaches, 
that they will feel that truth and they will feel your energy um, in the words that you're sharing with them. Um, I hear coaches say this all the time and I just can't think of any other better way to say it. So I'm just going to repeat it because it's so true. If you kind of sort of try, or if you're kind of sort of committed, if you're kind of sort of all in, then you're just going to kind of sort of get results. And I remember thinking that a long time ago and seeing that, but never really taking it to heart and never really applying it to my life. But it is so true. If you're just kind of sort of there, then you're probably not going to get the people that you're looking for. They're going to go to someone that they see all in, all committed, working hard every single day, really speaking their truth. And um, the last commitment I want to look or I want to speak to you is your commitment to your belief in yourself. Um, belief, I think, is the number one driver of success in our business. And you truly have to believe that no matter where you're at right now, you can be somewhere else in five months, in 10 months, in you know, the next year. You have to really have that belief inside of you because guess what? Nobody else is going to do it for you. My second piece of advice is if it's not working, change it. Um, I wish I had applied that earlier on in my postpartum journey, but I had gotten complacent and um, into, I guess, just a rhythm of feeling comfortable. And I, you know, after having gone through the 2B mindset and really working on myself from the inside out, I realized that, you know, these are our life. If we're not making changes constantly, we get stuck. Growth happens when we get uncomfortable. And sometimes it's hard. I, you know, as a teacher, I used to tell my, kid, my students this all the time, but learning is hard for a reason. It's because when we're learning, we're growing. And we all know when we were kids and we were growing physically, it hurt, right? You had growing pains. That's, it's a, named that for a reason. And anytime that you are changing and you are growing and you're doing Transform 20 and you want to just punch Sean in the face, that it's because you are growing and you're changing your body and you're pushing through those limiting beliefs and you're busting down walls that have been blocking you from, you know, the potential that you have deep inside of you. And so if you're not seeing change, if you're not growing, you have to make that change for yourself. You have to take that power from inside and do something different. And it might be uncomfortable, but it is going to help you grow. And the last thing that I have, I'm, I'm busting through this really quick, but hopefully that's fine. Um, the last thing that I wanted to share is just remember that you are in control of your success. I, for a long time, really relied on my upline. And I think that's why I, I was stuck for so long is because I just wanted someone else to do it for me. I mean, wouldn't that be awesome if someone else would just work our business for us and help us to hit five star elite? That would be amazing, but that's not how it works, unfortunately. <laughs> um, you have the ability to change your life, but you have to make that choice and you have to put in the work. And as hard as it is, and as many sacrifices as there are, you know, I can count multiple times I gave up a lot of things that I wanted to do or places I wanted to be or friends I wanted to go hang out with or lunches that I missed with friends at work. They were all worth it because now I get to be home and now I get to raise my kids. And that was the sole purpose of this vision and this dream that I had. And now I get to gift that to other women, to other moms. I have so many women on my team who are working their tail off and I know that that hard work will pay off. It might not be in one year, it might not be in two, but I know that, you know, over time that consistent effort and that consistent work is something that will pay off in our, in our line of work and it with team beach body. Um, and the best thing about what we get to do is that we get to pay it forward. 
and the whole compensation plan um, really is surrounded around the fact that we do it all together. You cannot have success without building success underneath you. And as soon as I changed my mindset to how am I going to be successful to how am I going to build success for my coaches? How am I going to train them and help them build success underneath them and help their coach? That whole shift from yourself to others is a game changer. And it's something that will change your life. It will help you to, I don't, I think I was, I had heard something about, um, anyway, I was just thinking about um, a quote I had read about selflessness and I don't remember it, but really along, I had something to do with along the lines of selflessness breeds success basically. And that go giver series. I always think about that. That was such a, um, eye opening series and, and personal development book that I read is, you know, it helped me to see that our success is not determined by what we accomplish. It's by what we give and, and how we help others. So that's kind of, I think, the shift and how I became unstuck. And if anyone has questions, I'd love to take them. This is always the awkward part. I'm like, how do you? And like, ta-da, we're done. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and thank you so much for being so real. And I know you're like, I don't want to cry in front of you guys, but... If you look through the comments, everyone was saying, oh my gosh, I can totally relate. And when you share those emotions, that's real. You know, it, it's real life. And so many people have been through, the, you know, the same thing or maybe currently are going through the same thing. So thank you for being so open about that. I have a question right off the bat and then we'll get into the questions over here. So you went from five star to 10 star, which is amazing. And then 11 to 12 star just this year already. What do you do with your diamonds? Do you do one-on-one -on -one with them? Do you do like what I, I've heard people do boxer or Marco Polo or like, what is your strategy with working with people to go to diamond? Yeah. So in the past year I started implementing, um, and I don't remember who created or invented this, but I started doing diamond internships and I those aren't necessarily where all of my diamonds were built, but many of them, you know, if they didn't hit diamond within the one month internship, they hit it within a month after. Um, and really just giving them that one-on-one -on -one attention, which is so hard to do with so many different coaches um, on our teams. But, you know, kind of finding those coaches who are really driven and really have a strong why and have been committed and doing all of the things like hitting success club and recruiting coaches and doing all these things, but not quite seeing the success that they have wanted. So that's kind of how I pick my diamond interns is people showing up and people doing the work. They have to be doing, you know, the success club tracker, um, the success club system tracker, I think is it's what it's called. And so if, you know, if they're doing all those things, then they can apply. And, um, I usually take two every month. So basically we get on a call every week and we, they can just ask me anything. They can ask me any questions that they have. They can ask me, um, about strategy. They can ask me about posts or leadership or whatever. So I've never, I have not used Voxer. I do have Marco Polo, but I don't really use it very much. I, I just don't have a lot of time, extra time to do all that stuff. So it would be fun though. I love that. I do love that. And I've seen the diamond intern stuff going around. And so I love that you do that. Okay. Yeah, so I can't you remember if it was Sammy Glonick or someone. Yeah, I think, who was it? Um, or maybe Jamie Glassman. I cannot remember. I'm having pregnancy brain. We just had her on here. Rachel Baldwin does that. Rachel Baldwin. Yes. yes. Yeah. I don't know who it all came from, but I will say, you know, that one-on-one -on -one attention is a game changer and it helps them to really 
instead of getting like an overall, like I obviously have a training and we have diamond trainings and we have all these things, but just ha letting them kind of make it more personal and talk about their personal struggles and hurdles and giving them that confidence. And I think when they, they get your time and attention, they also gain more confidence. It's like your energy is rubbed off on them, you know? That kind I of love it. that. Okay, so I see some questions coming in. So what was the one biggest action you took that increased your working coach's success? The <laughs> one biggest action, that's hard to really target, but I would probably say the one biggest action. Um, I, so in the past year, um, I really worked on giving my coaches opportunities for leadership. And I do think that that helped them grow as coaches and take that back to their teams. So, um, instead of me running sneak peeks and saying, Hey, everyone come in, you know, invite and we'll all do it together. I gave them, um, the opportunity to share a topic or to, run their own and do it with me kind of like you know if if there are any teachers in here kind of like that scaffolding approach of i do we do and then you do so now they're running their sneak peeks with their teams and they're teaching their coaches that leadership and i think when people see you like and i'm speaking like i'm talking to my teammate or something but if when they see our coaches running sneak peeks I think they're more, they, they see them more as a leader and they, they gain that confidence that, okay, this is going to be my mentor and I am going to be supported and it is something that I'm going to be able to do instead of them plugging it into their up, you know, these people into their upline coaches sneak peek and then being like, how come I never am seeing my coach on these videos? That was, um, I think a really big game changer for them. And it's always scary. The first time I know when I, when my coach asked me to make like a YouTube video, I think I, it took me like a hundred different shots of it because I, I just felt so unsure of myself, but the more you do it, that, you know, practice makes perfect. I love, that's so true. The more you do it, the better you get. Okay. So I saw another question come in that said, I connect so much with this. Um, I just struggle so much with that belief. Was there something that just really helped you build that belief? Was it to be mindset, your own journey that really brought out that confidence to believe more in yourself? Yeah, I think it was my commitment to myself. For a long time, I questioned my own abilities. I questioned myself as a mother. I questioned myself in so many ways. And I kept looking at all these other people thinking like, it looks so easy for them or they're having so much success. And when I got into, you know, when I started to be mindset and I started really applying these principles that she taught in all areas of my life, like really deconstructing my day talk, you know, writing down the things that I struggled with, writing down my successes, writing down the things that I felt like I was good at or that I was struggling with. When I saw the bigger picture and I started to share that, I think that was the game changer is instead of internalizing it, I took it to my social media and I started to share those things. And that's, I think what connected me with so many moms and so many other women who struggled with you know their weight their whole life or struggled with confidence that was and i think always has been something i've struggled with is really being confident in what i have to offer like before this call i was seriously like sweating bullets because i still feel like like why would they want to hear from me you know and that's kind of that negative inner dialogue where those positive affirmations really come in and i reach out to my upline. I'm like, I really need to talk through this with you. And having that person to lean on helps me feel more confident in myself. And that's what our coaches need. So when you share all of that, and when you build that belief in yourself, like, I, I feel like this is kind of the trend that I've been going with all these answers, but it bleeds into your team. And that confidence is really contagious. Um, your confidence is magnetic too. And when you breathe that confidence out into the world, and I think all of last year, I kept telling my, my coaches, I'm just breathing this belief into you. Like, 
I know you can do this because I question myself so much and I have overcome that and I know you can too. So really just telling them like, I believe in you. I know you can do this because I've been where you're at and I know what you're struggling with and I know that you're tired and I know that you're waking up at 4 a.m. because you are teaching all day long or you're working all day or you're in school all day. Like I know the struggle, but I also know what's on the other side of that struggle and I know that you can do it. So just breathing that belief into them while I was, you know, changing my own life, changing the way I thought, changing, you know, my inner confidence and kind of all that came with that to be mindset journey. And I love that you even shared like before you got on this call being like, wait a second, I don't know why I'm speaking on this. Cause guys, I think it's this common misconception that we think like when you start succeeding in this business, all of a sudden you're super confident and everything is really easy and you have people just coming to knock down your door. Believe me, that doesn't happen, you guys. It's like you said, Melissa, you have to breathe that belief into yourself every single day, every single day. Um, probably multiple times a day, right? <laughs> like multiple yeah. times a day. And it's so funny you mentioned that because I used to always tell Michael, like, it's just so easy for you. Like, you just have people flocking to you. Like, I have to work for it. And she's like, no, I work for it too. And that was a real eye opener for me. Like, I always just assumed it was so easy for these top coaches. Like, oh, they can say they're top 10 or they're top 100. And that's why people go to them. But really why people go to them is because of their confidence and because of their belief in what they have to offer. And that's what we all need to start implementing into what we're sharing is that belief and that confidence that we can help someone change their life. Yeah, and guys, outside of Beach Body, no one knows what Superstar Diamond means. No one knows what Top 10 means. You know, they're following you for your content and your heart. So let go of that, okay? All right, one last question, and it kind of goes off of this last question that uh, was asked, is what personal development book are you currently reading? And then what personal development book would you recommend for people who are struggling to believe in themselves? Yeah, right now I'm reading a book recommended by my coach. It's Essentialism. Um, I should know the author, but I can't think of it. Someone probably does, and I could look it up on my Audible really quick. Um, but for someone who struggles with belief, ooh, I, am, I haven't read this yet, but I think it would be really good for that purpose. And that's Sean T's book. I have it right here. T is for transformation. And I know that this is, I, I mean, I kind of have a feeling it has to do with belief. Another one, and this was huge for me, this book, um, I think initially when I had a lot of self-doubt and was really struggling with belief in myself because of other stuff that was going on and, you know, other people who did not believe in me, um, vocally, you know, we all have that. I read, um, Daring Greatly by Brené Brown. And I always talk about this book and it's probably, I don't even know if anyone else reads Brené Brown. I love her. Um, but she really helped me build belief in myself. Um, just by talking about owning who we are. And I think that's where belief comes from is when you truly love yourself, no matter your flaws, no matter what you've been through, no matter what you're going through. Um, and she just really changed the way I thought about my circumstances and helped me to overcome a lot of like internal stuff that I was hanging on to that kind of held me back from success. Yes, Brene Brown is amazing. And guys, just another one that I actually were, I'm recently listening to. Um, it's Mastering Your Mean Girl by Melissa Ambrosini. She has a really cute accent, like a real she cute looks cute, cute on her. Super cute. <laughs> but she has this Australian accent that's really fun to listen to. But she talks all about, I mean, we all have that inner voice that tells us that we can't do stuff. And she teaches you how to shut it off. So um, belief is what's going to get you as far as you want to go in this business, guys. So if you're struggling with it, you got to nail that right now. you got to nip it in the butt. Okay. So Melissa, anything else that you want to say? Um, I don't think so. 
I guess if there was something I had to leave with you guys, it's just don't let anyone or anything hold you back, not even yourself. If you're questioning at all your own abilities, do a lot of inner work and cast that vision. I, I don't really mean to plug this, but um, Moira created this awesome book. It's called Rise Up. It's a planner. And I got it, not necessarily for the planner, but for a lot of the stuff she does before you even get to the planner. It's a lot of vision, um, a lot of clarity statements, a lot of just building belief in what you're working towards. And that's really what you have to focus on is visualizing where you're going because when you know where you're going, you can get through all the mud and the stuff that you have to climb through and those mountains you're going over and all of that. So you just have to know where you're going so that you can kind of battle through all the other stuff. Yes. Okay, Melissa, thank you so much. Thank you for being, and if you look through the comments, everyone's like, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, because you hit so many people's hearts through this call and gave such actionable steps. You know, things that people can go through and say, okay, am I committed to myself? Okay, guys, we know, like I know I ate a gluten-free donut earlier. Okay, I'm growing a human, but still there's no excuse, right? Like I know I deserve it. it. <laughs> you know it. If you semi show up, you're semi going to get the results, right? Um, are you committed to your team? Are you showing up for your team? Or have you let your upline take over the lead, right? Because they didn't sign up with your upline. They signed up with you, right? And then, you know, making sure that you're committed to yourself. You know, you have to commit to yourself, you guys, and believe in yourself. And like we said, because I think most of the questions were about the belief, go get that done. You know, go believe in yourself because you deserve it. I think there's like what? 70 people on here. Um, guys, go out and believe, believe in yourself. You can accomplish whatever you want to on this, with this business. You know, the sky's the limit. I think that's the coolest part of it. So Melissa, thank you so, 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 so much. Guys, I will get this recording up tomorrow morning. Um, and I guess I'll talk to y'all later. Bye guys.